Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. You know, lately the Lord's just been really convicting me. It seems like again and again and again, you know how you'll you'll hear the same message again and again from the Lord. Maybe it's a scripture verse you read and then a friend will say something and then you you realize the Lord's really been speaking to you. And the Lord has been really uh, challenging me with the with the thought that if you're not growing, you're getting weaker. You you know, trees are meant to grow. Every year the, the tree grows stronger. We're meant to, be, we have to always... Uh, have that sense of, of growing and seeking and, and becoming more of what the Lord uh, has for you. I know when I was training for my world championships in tandem surfing, uh, every day my partner and I we are we were striving to get better. I might have spent, I might have done an hour of flexibility training. I might have spent we might have spent uh, time um, doing cardio or time doing lifts, time in the water, uh, resistance training uh, through sup paddling or through weightlifting. Uh, but you, as as a as a as a man and men and women of God, you need to have a path. You need to have a, a a goal, a direction, so that you can get stronger. It needs to be a purposeful thing. It doesn't just happen to you. You have to decide. I'm going to get stronger. We just went through a thing with Bears Man Cave where we did about five weeks where we did a manly tune up and we looked at every single area of of our lives, whether it was financial, career, family, loving our spouse growing deeper in the Lord spiritually, sacred reading. We looked at every single area, and we actually set specific goals for what we were going to do uh, in these different areas of our life so that we could become stronger. Uh, so you, so becoming stronger doesn't just happen to you. It's something that you choose. You know, maybe maybe you're doing, maybe you're getting a Fitbit watch, and you're going to try to walk 10,000 steps a day and maybe listen to an audio book while you're walking. Maybe you realize you haven't been as disciplined as you should be in your prayer time. Maybe you're not studying to pursue uh, uh, advancement within your career. In every, every area of your life, uh, have a goal, have a direction, have a purpose, and then uh, and then watch yourself grow stronger. Because the thing is, to win a world title uh, in surfing, that virtue that I developed in fortitude, in prudence, in in self mastery, in 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 every area, that same virtue works. In every area of my life, I used to have a goal every year. I would have a, a physical goal. One year it might have been to to paddle the Molokai Channel, the most treacherous, one of the most treacherous channels in the world, on my surfboard about 30 miles, or it might have been pedaling my bicycle across the United States, or getting a black belt, or something, or winning a world title, something. Uh, and and quite often that 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 was a physical goal. And people think, well, you just you just want to get stronger. Uh, you just want to get, uh, you're just kind of thinking about, you know, your fitness. But actually, when you take control of your physical fitness, when, you, when you're pursuing a goal in that area, you're almost working a virtue from the outside in. You're learning fortitude. You're learning coraggio. And so I'm just challenging everybody, don't be, don't be dormant. Uh, you're meant to grow stronger. And there are times and seasons when uh, you may be less active, uh, there may be times when uh, you may be more isolated, and the Lord's calling you to that. But um, and there has to be times of rest in between your times of pursuing uh, on your quest. But don't think that if you're if you're standing still, that you're standing still. You're going backwards. Uh, as humans, we're meant to lean into the wind. We get we get we get stronger. You know when you're when you're working out physically. You get you get a, a you get something called an endorphin. It's it's a good release of of a certain. Uh, Hormone that makes you feel good. Uh, when you when you when you're spending time with the Lord and praying with and, and seeking understanding and studying, um, you get a certain reward. It's called it's the grace of the Holy Spirit. You know, uh, you, there'll be grace there. Grace there's waiting for you to tap in tap into the the presence of the Lord. So if you're if you're just sitting still, you're in trouble. You need to continue to be on a pursuit. Continue to be on a quest to grow go deeper with God. Today we have our, our guest with us. We thought, you know what we should do? We should probably get, like, maybe we could find just a regular Catholic guy and get him on our show. And so our friend Kendra Von Esch said, there's this guy, Jeff Garrett. He's a regular Catholic guy. And 
fact, he has a podcast called The Regular Catholic Guy. You should have him on your show. So, so Jeff Garrett, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Thanks, Bear. It's great to be here with you. So you, where are you right now? Right now I'm in St. Louis, Missouri. But normally you but live in uh, where? Omaha, Nebraska. The reason I'm here is my daughter just had her second child. So my wife came down and I, we came down to help her with her two children, with her husband as well. Yeah. So that's so great. So what he's trying to tell me is that I don't have any grandkids, but you do. Okay. I get that. Just kind of making me feel bad here. But yeah, so, <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> but Omaha, Nebraska, isn't that like the beef packing? Is that all about beef in that area or am I not thinking right? We're the beef capital of the world. Yeah, it makes me hungry just thinking about it, man. <laughs> and that's the home where Doug Berry used to be in that area, and yeah, he now did. he now he headed south. He's chickened out. He headed down. He headed down to Texas. He's down there someplace. But if you're living in, if you're living in Canada, I mean, if you're living in Canada, well, if you're in Nebraska, you might as well be right. If you're living up north, there, I always think of those people there that they, if they play hockey, they hunt, they fish. Uh, which one of those categories do you fall into? I do a lot more fishing than I do hunting anymore. When I was a kid, I used to hunt a lot, but now it's more fishing. What did you hunt for? Pheasants, quail. Oh, isn't there something beautiful about the, I know as a young kid, I remember I was actually born in North Dakota. I moved to California when I was real young, but I remember pheasant hunting and grouse hunting. I wasn't hunting, but I was out with, my dad was out there with his hunting dog and Something about the flight of a pheasant. Mm-hmm. So beautiful. Yeah, it is, and it's amazing when they take off. They're they're pretty loud when they take off. It scares you, huh? It it will make you <laughs> jump the first time you hear them. I, I've heard that one of the reasons why they're. I know when when I was a young kid, and we had quail in California. Uh, they would make that loud sound so that you wouldn't find their babies. You would chase them instead of their babies. I heard I heard something like that. But yeah, I, I as a child, pheasant pheasant and grouse were were um, just an everyday thing. You would walk into the dentist's office, he'd have a beautiful pheasant, you know, that he had shot there. You know, I've, I've been into Father Mitch Paquist's house a couple of times, speaking of hunting, and he's got walls and walls of books, but he's got one wall of trophies of, of animals that he's taken down. And pheasant tastes so good if it's been feeding on the corn, right? Yeah, it's really good. Yeah, really good. Well, also, you said, I think you mentioned that you, uh, you your big thing, you go you go fishing up in Canada, don't you? Yeah, that's one of our favorite things to do is go up to Canada. Uh, granted, with COVID, it's been hard last year and probably hard this year to get up there, but it'd be the first times I haven't been up there in probably 18 years. But where do you go? I mean, do you, do you fly up there? Or do you take a boat up there? What do you do? Um, generally, we fly up to the border, International Falls, and uh -huh. then we rent yeah. a vehicle and drive up from there. We we usually go up in Ontario. We go to Lac Seul, which So you, you go across the border and then rent a car? Rent a car and then cross the border. <laughs> Have you ever had Canadian bacon pizza? I heard, uh, you know, I, the, when the first time I went to International Falls, I yeah. ordered a Canadian bacon pizza because I wanted to know if it was really, they had it in Canada. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to ask this story. When you go up there and then, are you, are you, are you, do you have a guide or, or, or are you on a boat when you're fishing or? We've done both. Yeah, definitely on a boat, but we've done both. We've uh, fished on our own and we fished with guides. Uh, generally, fishing's better with the guides, but once you learn where to fish from the guides, you can go out on your own. Well, are you are you staying in cabins or are you camping or? Uh, we stay in cabins and we've also stayed in outposts as well, which outposts are just a really rough cabin out yeah, in the middle of yeah. the lake somewhere. Well, who makes you dinner? Who makes you dinner at night? That's oh, question. I'm usually the guy that makes dinner. Unless we stay at, uh, at the resort, and uh, the resort has American plan. <laughs> uh, That's, for for you. That's for wimps. That's for wimps, right? <laughs> now, I remember when we when I went uh, on a fishing trip up to Canada, I was kind of shocked because as they're loading up the boat, it was like steak, 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 and we were pulling our, bo our boats up there, and uh, and a lot of beer. I remember that, too. And I thought we were going to be eating fish. No, we're eating steak. <laughs> I start getting notice, nervous if they start loading up steak because then I'm thinking, okay, that must mean we aren't going to catch any fish. Exactly. You know, I was out on a fishing trip this last week, a couple weeks ago with Chris Gokey, one of our man cave members here. And we went out deep sea fishing and we got one bite. 
the whole time out there. And so what, what's the, what's the one, the one that got away story? Um, I was fishing actually in Wisconsin at this time and it was grind grindstone Lake. If I remember right, I was a kid and I had fought this fish for probably about 30 minutes and it was a musky Lake. And if oh, you're familiar with fishing, musky are, are very large fish, freshwater, freshwater shark. fish, freshwater shark. Yeah. They're huge or can be huge. And I got this fish right up to the boat and it snapped the line. I mean, that's the story. Did you see it? Yeah, we could see it in the water. How big was it? it? How big was it? It was big. Um, uh, But I've caught I've caught one that was much bigger than than that one. And it was a northern pike up in Canada. Yeah, it seemed like Muskie's the big brother of the northern pike. Uh, We're talking with Jeff Garrett because we thought we should get a regular Catholic guy on our show. And that's the name of his podcast. That's the name of his website. What's the website? Is it with the or is it just regular? RegularCatholicGuy.com. But RegularCatholicGuy.com. You can find, find Jeff Garrett there. We'll be back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. This is Daniel the Moon Markham with another episode of Country Up. Commitment was driving between Dallas and Houston recently, listening to talk radio show host Dennis Prager. Now, there's one real smart dude. I don't often listen to the radio except when traveling by car or truck in order to help the time pass. In doing so, I try to find Mr. Prager whenever I can. Always get some serious learning from that old boy. Yesterday, he was asking his listeners if they thought being passionately in love was a prerequisite for a successful marriage. The conclusion was passionate love and marriage is helpful, and I might add a bit fun, too. But passion, he concluded, was not the determining factor for a happy and successful marriage. I was about to call or text in my comments to Mr. Prager when a lady called in and said what I was thinking and knowing to be true. A good marriage is spelled C-O-M-M-I-T-M-E-N-T. Feelings come and go, but commitment stays. Lots to be said for commitment. Like going through a season when your spouse is irritating the stuffing out of you or you're doing the same to your spouse. It's worth waiting it out. And commitment is what carries you through the waiting. Commitment means the other's more deserving than yourself. And that'll stoke a new fire in the future. Better stuff to come. Reminds me of what the old Apostle Paul said about love in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. He wrote, love is patient. It's not self-seeking. It's not easily angered and keeps no record of wrongs. Seems as though the apostle was sort of spelling out love as C-O-M-M-I-T-M-E-N-T. This is Daniel LaBoon Markham at CountryUp.org on a journey a few miles this side of heaven. Hey man, I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at DeepAdventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Get your free stuff. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell. Don't miss out. Mahalo for your kokua in supporting us. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to you, our listeners, for supporting the Bear Wozniak Adventure radio show at deepadventure.com. We would not be able to bring you our radio show with its uniquely powerful and gritty outreach without your help. You can become part of our pack. You can support our ministry by going to patreon.com forward slash bearwozniak or by just going to deepadventure.com and clicking on the Patreon link and become a part of our outreach. That's deepadventure.com. Once again, mahalo for your kokua. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak.
Aloha. Welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We want to invite you to go to our website, deepadventure.com, because when you do, right away, it's going to say, do you want to subscribe to Bear's newsletter? And you're going to say yes, because when you do, you get the free audio version of my latest book, Deep Virtue, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue. You can download that. And every week we send you an email. And it's good stuff, you guys. We've got a special section for the men. We call it the Man Cave. And then we have a, sec- a special section for the Mama Bears. And you always get our, our that night's radio show. You get the video version of it, the YouTube version of it. Uh, so go, go to our website and subscribe to, uh, to uh, our newsletter. And there's all, all kinds of other things there you'll find very interesting. It's deepadventure.com is the name of the website. Where our guest today, we thought we'd go out and try to find a regular Catholic guy. Actually, that's what, that's what we interview is regular Catholic guys. But this guy claims that he is the regular Catholic guy. This We have as our guest today, Jeff Garrett. Aloha, Jeff. Welcome back for the second segment. Thanks, Bear. So we were lying about fishing, I think, as we, as we took the break. You know what happened to me? I was going to say I was, I was out uh, with Chris Gokey, this gnarly dude. He's, he's a bull rider, a heli- Navy helicopter pilot, and a really and a scratch golfer, too, I have to say. But we went out deep sea fishing because he was being reassigned to uh, – to Pensacola from Hawaii, and he said, "I'm going to take you. I, I'm going to spring for it and take take us out deep sea fishing." And we didn't get. We got one bite, but that was it. We didn't get. It was like a hit, and that was it. The whole day out there, and then the next day, I'm out spear fishing right in front of my house, and it's kind of murky out there because they're doing some sort of sand restoration. And out of the darkness, out of the murkiness, came this big uh, parrotfish, and I re- released my sling. I actually, let go of it, my Hawaiian sling, because. I, I wanted to really penetrate him, and he took off with my spear, and I chased him through the murky water, and eventually I found my spear lying on the sand down below because he had, he had, he had wriggled free of it. So I've got had two bad fishing experiences in one day. That would have been a, a big day. But really the, the big thing about hunting and fishing is I think there's something about the fellowship with other men that takes place there. Talk, talk to us about that. Absolutely. Anytime I think that men go on any type of adventure or do anything physical, uh, we find that we we bond with those men. We have an we have an experience that we've had together that only we've had. And when you have that experience, men tend to remember that and they tend to bond. You know, some bear some of my biggest experiences of bonding have been hiking up mountains. Actually, which mountains? Uh, near Banff uh, mm-hmm. in Canada, Alberta. And Mount Temple was probably the one, it's the largest peak there, the highest peak, and went up with five, five men. And uh, it was just an amazing experience to go up. I've done four peaks there in that area, but that's the peak that is the one that everybody wants to get to the but That's top tough of. for you because what, what, what elevation are you at in Nebraska? Oh. I'm, I'm a, what they call a flatlander. Uh, so, it, you know, it's, we're at, you know, above sea level, but not much, you know, a thousand feet, 2000 feet, but I'm going up to 12,000 feet on some of those peaks. So what, what, what height are you starting at a mile up 7,000 uh, feet or we're, we were starting up around uh, 4,500 feet. Yeah. So that's about the time you, f- you feel it. You feel the difference. I've long, done that. A, it makes for a long day. And, uh, it makes for a pretty sore man the next day. Yeah, you know, it, as hard as it is to go up, up, it's it's hard. It's it's physically, uh, it takes out it takes out your energy going up, but it really is trying on more trying on your body going down. Do you agree? Yeah, it, yeah. it's. I think it's harder going down than going up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It really. I mean, it's. You don't seem to use quite as much energy, but if there, I don't know. There's just something different about going down, going down a. A steep mountain, and and so we were. T- I was talking about in my opening segment about how, if you're not getting stronger, you're getting weaker. Well, what is it in a, what is it about men that they like? Like when we ride our motorcycles, and go, why do we like this? It's so hard. Why do we like doing this? What? Why? Why do men want to have a challenge like that? I think all men want to have a challenge, bear, and that that challenge. Once you meet that challenge, and you've accomplished it, it makes you feel stronger. It makes you feel more capable. It's kind of like you. I heard you talking earlier in the segment, and you're talking about trees. Well, trees that go through storms become stronger, and the ones that aren't strong get knocked out. And it's the same thing. If you don't accomplish something, 
And if you live a life where you aren't accomplishing, it's a very big struggle for men. There, it is. It's just so interesting to me how men want to be challenged. But, but it, you know, we want a challenge that's worthy. And my dad used to say, uh, when, when he would talk to me about setting goals, set a goal that, a goal that makes you need to grow to, to, to become the goal. Not just to achieve it, but to become on that on that journey it has something that changes you from the outside in or from the inside out it's about what we do become along the journey isn't it and, and you know when you're in an envi- environment in the wild it's something also where your wits need to be about you like when i'm out in big surf i'm not thinking about paying the bills i'm thinking about where's that next set coming from and when is it coming and what reef is it going to hit on because I don't want to die, you know. There's kind of like that. That there's that. that there's something about it where it makes you live in the now. You're living in the moment, and God is. You know, read Augustine's Confessions. He talks about time. God doesn't live. Isn't God lives in the inter- eternal now? And when you kind of get to that still point, you can kind of say, Lord, I, are you here with me? I'm. I'm. You know. You, there's that moment where you have a deeper connection with the Lord. Because you're not thinking about the past, you're not thinking about the future, you're just there with Jesus. Jesus' name means I am who am salvation. What, what do you think more about the, the, the thing about the company of men, these, these five men? I know you've been involved in helping develop uh, men's, all kinds of different men's fellowships, small mm-hmm. groups. I think small groups for men are really important. Uh, think if you don't have a group of men to fall back on and have accountability to, it's so easy to fall away. And there's a saying that comes from the Bible, iron sharpens iron. And you want to be around men that want to improve themselves, that want to grow closer to Christ. And you can do that together. It's really hard to do that alone. Even Christ, he went out and got 12 disciples. He didn't just say, all right, guys, go out on your own. He sent them out how? Two by two, right? Mm-hmm. And then they came back together, and, you and know, they formed more men. Yeah, and then when they went out to form churches, they went out in twos or threes like that. Right. You know, and it's not about, you know, the word accountability is like a word that I, I cringe on for some reason. I hear that a lot. Um, when I'm with the other men and, I, and, and, and they've given, and we've set a goal together, for example, in Man Cave, we've all set our fitness goals for the year, and we're, we're reporting on them to each other. It's because I don't want to let them down. Right. It's not, not so much about letting me down. Is that I, I want to fulfill my mission so that I'm not letting them down. And, and, and I don't want to let myself down either. And accountability, I, I just think it's, it's a word I've heard a lot. And it's like, I don't want to have to go to someone and say, well, you know, I really, I really failed this week and, I'm, and, and I want to be accountable to you. I think it's, it's more of a, it, maybe it's the wrong word, but it, but I like the iron sharpens iron, and when a man falls, there's another man there to pick him up. It's not about I really I really blew it this last week. It's about it's about men coming alongside side you, and there's times when you you help carry them, and times when they help carry you. You know, I remember once I was running along. This is kind of funny. I was running along a railroad track in Texas, and I had a buddy with me. We we're going to see how far who could run the farthest on one of the rails. You can't run very far. And then we were running and we we're kind of racing and we're kind of balancing with our hands extended. But when we locked arms for a moment, just kind of accidentally, we could run forever because we kept each other balanced. And we went and we, we stayed on the rails. We stayed between the navigational beacon, so to speak, when men are, are challenging other men. Absolutely. And so when you, when you were on, when you, uh, when you're on this mountain uh, top experience with these men, how long, how long do you stay on top of that mountain? We usually stay up, the, the ones we've stayed up on, probably half hour, 40 yeah. minutes, <laughs> yeah. shooting pictures and getting uh, pictures of ourselves, taking pictures of the scenery and just sitting back there and just, it's a place where you can see the magnitude of God. You, you can see for miles and miles and miles and you're so high and it's so beautiful. It's just something to experience. Well, do, and, you, do you ever go to those? Go ahead. I'm sorry. You've conquered something, right? Do you, you ever go to the, the those places where you there's a metal box and you open it and you sign your name to say that you've, you've reached the top of that mountain? I've been to places that ha- people sign their names on rocks, and then I've been even to where they've had like 
shelters up along as you're mm-hmm. going up to the top of some of these mountains that people will put their names into those even. Yeah, it's so cool. We're talking with Jeff Garrett. His, he's the, his ministry is regular Catholic guy. You can listen to his podcast or go to his website. And uh, like I said, we wanted to find a, a regular Catholic guy to have on our show, so what better than to have Jeff Garrett join us. This is the Bear Wozniak Convention. We want to let you guys know, you know, our TV show is doing so great. It's won, uh, it's won uh, several awards, and it's now available on Prime Video. You have to go to Prime Video and do the search. Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak. Season 1 and Season 2 are up, and it won't be long before Season 3 is released on EWTN. We're almost done with it. But if you want to see the early version of our show, if you want to see it before it's even on EWTN, you can go to Bear, the Bear Wozniak Adventure to either become a mama bear or you become become a member of Bear's Man Cave, and then you get to see uh, all of you get all of the videos of, of Long Ride Home Plus, all the new episodes the director's cut before they've even been released on EWTN. And so you can power watch it. Now, listen, Mama Bears, I'm talking to you. This this is where you can kind of be having it kind of tuned up and ready to watch episode one of Long Ride Home when you're when the, that man in your life that you've been praying for you know is going to show up. And I'm telling you, we have so many so many testimonies from men and women that said, I, I, I started watching this show, Long Ride Home, I realized... Uh, what it was about, and it brought me back to the Catholic Church. So uh, just letting you know, go to deepadventure.com, find out more about how you can uh, use Long Ride Home as an evangelistic tool. Be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Aloha, this is Bear Wozniak coming to you from my home in Waikiki Beach. I'm looking across the channel past Diamond Head in the background and then across that channel is the Molokai uh, channel. It's about 27 miles wide and I used to have a home in Molokai. You know the home of St. Damien and St. Mary Ann. My father was a deacon there but I would sit at my home in Molokai and I'd look across that channel, the Kiavi channel, I go you know what I could paddle that thing on my tandem surfboard. People do it on special kind of paddle boards, outrigger canoes, stand-up paddle boards. Back then no one was stand-up paddling. But I thought, I can do that. And of course, the minute you say, I could do that, it gnaws on you. It just gnaws on you. So I scheduled a time. I made a, I made a, made an appointment date on my calendar to make that paddle. I got up about four in the morning. So when I left Molokai, I was up in, it was in the middle of the night. But I had set my compass on my surfboard. And when I looked at my compass, it was pointing directly at the full moon that was setting on its way to setting into Diamond Head Crater. Uh, once I lay down on the board, I couldn't see the crater, but I could see uh, the full moon, and I followed that moon. I followed my compass. I followed the course. In our lives, sometimes we lose our way. And it's important just to keep going and going. You know, the thing about it, when I pedaled my bicycle across the United States, when I paddled my outrigger, my, my surfboard, 27 miles across the Molokai Channel. The whole key to that was one pedal stroke at a time on my bicycle, one paddle stroke at a time on my surfboard. As soon as you enter into an adversity, you're on your way out. The key is to set your compass, to follow God's will, to stay the course. And as soon as you enter into uh, the desert, you're on your way out the other side. So stay the course, follow the true setting that you have in the Catechism of the Catholic Church and the sacraments. This is Bear Wozniak from DeepAdventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link, or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak Adventure possible. Yes, we mean you. Go to deepadventure.com and check out Bear's Man Cave, a men's only Facebook group. 
Join the pack with other men as they challenge and inspire one another to manly virtue. Plus, you can dialogue with us in our regular video chat meetups. Plus, get your exclusive content. Join at deepadventure.com. That's deepadventure.com. Aloha. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. We want to invite you guys. We have a, a fan page. It's called Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure. I can't ha have any more friends <laughs> on Facebook because we have too many of them. But fan page is an unlimited number of people. And so we've moved our morning show, our ocean catechism, our ocean sunrise catechism show to the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure page. And it's really cool because every morning, wherever I am, I'm usually by an ocean we do a Facebook live stream, and we're actually on our second time going through the entire catechism. We're about, uh, oh, maybe a fourth of the way through, our second time through. And we just go line by line by line, and we just talk story. And people, um, you know, tune in, and they, 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 they give comments while I'm doing my little 10 to 15-minute morning thing. But what they really, what's really cool is people press the share button, and suddenly that little show gets out to, you know, maybe over 1,000 people. So... Um, come, you know, if you're, and if you don't get to watch it live, because we kind of come up randomly, I guess around maybe one o'clock or so in the afternoon Eastern time, because we're here in Hawaii, um, you can always uh, watch it on the channel because we post it later, or go to go and subscribe to the Bear Wozniak uh, YouTube channel because everything is there. We got tons of stuff there too. We're talking with Jeff Garrett. Uh, he's uh, he, his ministry is regular Catholic guy. So, Jeff, welcome back to the show. Thanks, Bear. We were talking about what you know when you're up on the top of a mountain and how yeah. you really don't spend a lot of time up there, you know, because it's usually cold and windy up at the top, very tippy top of a mountain. But when you're at the very, at the very top, it's like people will come out here to Hawaii, and I'll take them up. We have some pretty gnarly mountain hikes here, or I'll take them out to the edge of a reef where the ocean is just kind of exploding at the end of the reef. Kind of like it's 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 kind of like. When you're at the, on the top of a mountain pipe type uh, peak, you're on the edge, and you're kind of at the. When you you know the best views in life are from the edge, edge of the reef, edge of a mountain top. And what I mean by view is when you're living life and you get yourself to a position where you've kind of come to the end of yourself. Like when you t climbed a mountain like that, you feel feel like you've given it all to get there, or if you've done a, a sailing trip or. Or what, whatever. There's certain things in your life. Maybe you've passed a, a really tough exam, and you feel like you just gave it all, and you came to the end of yourself. That's a really great place because it's on the edge that you can see, and you get the best perspective in your life. Especially like when I used to sail alone. Mostly, nobody people would want to sail with me, so I'd sail alone out in the ocean. You can get lost out there in the fog. And it, well, I was sailing. This is when I lived in California. I always trailed a rope out behind my boat, a line, a sheet, as we call it. And every 10 feet, there was a knot. It was a thick rope, and there'd be a knot every 10 feet. And it would trail out there well over 100 feet in case I fell off. I'd try to grab one of those knots and pull myself back into the boat. You know what that last knot is on the end of that rope? is called the bitter end. And a lot of times, there's people like now listening that they feel like they're at the bitter end, that they've come to an end of themselves, that they're kind of on that edge. And I'm here to tell you that it's there at that spot where you can hear God's voice with great clarity. And right now, the Lord's knocking on the door to your heart and just saying, let me in. This is the, the Lord at those points, whether it's after a great victory or after a great loss, Turn your heart to the Lord. It's there when you've totally emptied yourself that you can hear that still voice of God saying, uh, let me in. Surrender your life to me and and, uh, and let me in. So I have my guest today, Jeff Garrett, who's the regular Catholic guy. Hey, Jeff, we're going to pray for a moment for people. So those of you who are listening to the show, we're just going to pray for you. For those of you who have kind of come to the end of yourself and kind of come to that, maybe it's the mountaintop or maybe it's the, the pit, um, but you're at that place where you're saying, Lord, I, I want to experience this mountaintop experience with you, or Lord, I'm at the very bottom of the pit and I need for you to help me out. Lord Jesus, we come to you and we abandon ourselves to you, Lord. 
we've come to that bitter end and we just abandon ourselves to you. We ask you, Lord, for your grace and your power and to just come in and fill my heart, Lord. You're the King of Kings, the Lord of Lord, the Prince of Peace, the author and finisher of our faith. I want to give you the reins to my heart and ask you to fill me, to lead me, to guide me, to give your, to, to bring your power to, to me. Be the charioteer of my life. In Jesus' name we pray. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. But so, so, so Jeff Garrett, um, regularcatholicguy.com, You've, you've chosen to go hunting, to go fishing, to hike mountains with, in the Fellowship of Men. Tell me about the types of men's group that you've helped start. Well, with men, I've done That Man Is You groups. I've set up just well, let's small... Talk, let's, well, let's talk about That Man Is You for a moment. What sure. is that? What is that? That Man Is You is set up by Steve Bowman. It's a, out of Houston, Texas. There's hundreds of That Man Is You groups throughout the United States and Canada. You can set up your own group by contacting that man as you, but it's really simple because it's like anything that is really good to do for men. If the simpler you make it, the better. And it's a Steve's turnkey man, system. It's turnkey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a system in a box. <laughs> yeah. As long as you can stream video, and you have somebody that'll MC it, guys that'll set up table groups. Easy. You forgot coffee. You need coffee. Donuts, I mean, eggs. Most of them start at 6.30 in the morning. Here in Hawaii, we do it in the evenings because so many people here start their workday real early because they're working with people on the mainland. So, But we started a few groups here too. But the, that, the, that man is you group. Just to go, you're usually starting at 6.30 or so in the morning or 7 in the morning. We start so. at 5.45. Yeah, so you have to man up just to go, right? <laughs> right. And what's amazing is the first time that we had it, we had 170 guys show up for the first time. And I was like, because everybody's really afraid that we weren't going to get that many guys to show up. You know, it's 545 in the morning. How many guys are going to show up on a Friday morning? And like 170 guys showed up and it was awesome. It was a great opportunity for the men to get to know each other because usually in a parish, the women know each other really well and the men don't know each other as well. Maybe the Knights of Columbus, you know each other. But you know the faces, but you don't know the men. Gives you an awesome opportunity to get to know the men in your parish. Tell us a little bit more. I mean, like, there's this kind of this thing I think with that man is you, where you you kind of start out. They talk about every show, every session. They start out with some sports statistics or something like that. I forget. Well, one of the groups that I, I uh, went to, they would actually show ESPN in the morning before the show got started. They yeah, because. Somebody yeah. would uh, actually would record the clips and would yeah. show them it from the night before. <laughs> yeah, and the reason why is there's a reason behind that. It's like when you when you come home and your wife says, "So what did you guys talk about?" That man is you. Oh, we talked about football. You know, because what weather. happens at that man is you stays at that man is you, right? You get you get gritty with each other, you know. And but it has such a great uh, a great approach where you're, and and I love it. It starts on time. There's video, you dialogue with each other, it ends on time. You know, and that's the, one of the key things there too, especially with businessmen, you want to start on time, you want to end on time. Yeah, and then, and then the men after that, some of them then find, find time to have, a, have breakfast with each other every now and then, or, or you, know, my, you know what we do at the man cave? We have the, uh, this thing I call the, uh, the seven virtue cigars, the man cave cigars. And each cigar yeah. is a different blend based on that, that virtue of the seven virtues. And on that, the band of that cigar is a quote, if it's like, if it's caritas or love, there's a quote from my book on the virtue, the, the band itself. And it's such a, it's a, you have to unpeel it to smoke that cigar. And so um, it, it, it caught, so you, inv so we have it here at my house, we invite, I invite some guys over about once every six weeks or so we have kind of a cigar night and someone brings their favorite whiskey or something and there'll be that guy that shows up that has never been there before and he's like these are just a bunch of regular guys and then but then and then and we're and but then the conversation we don't allow talking about politics we don't allow talking about things like that we just we let the conversation go deeper and it's a great way to evangelize is, is to just after that that man is you program then barbecue every now and then or have, have, a, have a whiskey night or cigar night out on your deck or, or, or like you, go fishing or something. But invite that other guy because the key to winning souls is, 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 is relationships. It's not 
preaching at someone, it's befriending someone and bringing them into the kingdom, you know. We're talking with, with Jeff Garrett from Regular Guide. So tell us about your your podcast. We've got a few minutes before with this break. Uh, people can find your podcast where? You can find the podcast on the website at regularcatholicguy.com. Find it on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and Stitcher. And Stitcher. So uh, if you if you want to, uh, and you have some really cool guests on your show too. So you, you can find you can find uh, Jeff Garrett, regularcatholicguy.com. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. Hey man. I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Get your free stuff. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell. Don't miss out. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link, or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. Mahalo for your Kokua in supporting us. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to you, our listeners, for supporting the Bear Wozniak adventure radio show at deepadventure.com. We would not be able to bring you our radio show with its uniquely powerful and gritty outreach Without your help, you can become part of our pack. You can support our ministry by going to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak or by just going to deepadventure.com and clicking on the Patreon link and become a part of our outreach. That's deepadventure.com. Once again, mahalo for your kokua. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure, where we believe the most radical thing you can do in life is abandon yourself to the wild adventure of God's will. And you know, here, here at uh, Deep Adventure Ministries, people ask me, tell me about masculine spirituality, and I go, no. No, we want to know about masculine spirituality. I'll talk about manliness if you want me to. I'll talk about what it means to be a real man, which of course is, is, is the, the whole the whole uh, scope of a real man is someone who lives the life of virtue, you know, justice, self-mastery, prudence, fortitude, faith, hope, and love. And we have uh, someone on our show today whose ministry is called Regular Catholic Guy. That's what, uh, that's what we strive to be as regular Catholic guys, is to be manly, uh, manly uh, men, of, men of manly virtue. Jeff Garrett, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Thanks, Bear. Well, we were talking about the importance of small groups. In, in the That Man Is You program, you said you had a, a lot of men show up at 5.45 in the morning. I know we have early starts, some are 6.30 or 7. Uh, and then you have breakout discussions, small tables. But then don't you find out of there there becomes people that some of the men kind of get together regularly outside of that group? Yeah, I do. And actually, I have a group of uh, seven, eight guys that we get together on a weekly basis ourselves from that group. And what, tell us about that. Well, we get together and uh, we'll look at the gospel for the, fo- for the upcoming Sunday, and then we'll have a discussion, usually about things that are going on in the world. And we try to come up with ways that we as men can make a difference in the world. Mm. You know, we'll, not just sit back and talk about it, but what can we do? For example, 
For example, it might be that there are some things going on politically that we decide to write to our senators and congressmen. It might be that there's a need in the parish that we get with the pastor and say, how can we help you with this, Father? Mm. I bet a priest would just love to hear those questions. How can I help? They like it when you can go and ask them, how can I help you? Yeah, I know on Long Ride Home, there's one of my friends, Jerry Cohn. He's been my, one of my longest friends. And I'd come off a long road trip. We'd been filming for about a week. And Jerry flew in. Uh, he couldn't make it at the beginning of the shoot. And he flew in, and I was going into this hotel room carrying my heavy uh, you know, pack from my motorcycle. And the elevator door opens, and it's Jerry. And I've just ridden maybe 900 miles over the last couple of days, and I'm exhausted. And he looks at me, and he says, what can I do to help? What a great question to go to your priest and ask. But get ready. <laughs> get ready. They have a list. <laughs> yeah. But what a great thing to do. And so it's not like you sit around and talk. So many people say, I'm pro-life. Oh, you are? Well, what do you do about it? <laughs> well, that's right. my opinion. That's not, I'm not pro-life. It's just my opinion. But to actually hold to a, a principle and do something about it is huge. And men, when you have one or two men working together on something, incredible things can happen. The other thing that we've learned a lot, Bear, is just our greatest apostolate is the right at home. Because if we don't do a good job with our, our spouses and if we don't do a good job with our children and teaching them about our children about the faith and living the faith and being an example for them, um, then what we do outside of that isn't as important. It's not. Yeah, it's it's hypocrisy. Correct. What do you do in the home? What should a man do in the home? You know, it, it's funny because when I was younger and I had young kids, I remember I had a priest over for dinner and I was upset with the school because they weren't teaching the, the, what I thought was the faith to the kids. And so he took me aside and he says, you know, Jeff, I have to tell you this, but that's your responsibility. It's not our responsibility. So that was like getting hit upside the head with a two by four. And at that point in time, I realized that, yeah, he's right. It is my responsibility. It's my wife's responsibility as well, but more so mine because I'm the head of the household. So at that point in time, we started doing more teaching the faith, teaching about the saints, talking about uh, lives of the saints at dinner time, doing family rosaries, which started as a decade. And as the kids got older, went longer. And it's just as much as anything, uh, leading by example. I have a friend bear that told me at one point in time, he said, you know, the most amazing thing I ever saw and the thing that stuck with me my whole life is I went in, I saw my dad on his knees praying. And from there on, I knew that he was real and that what he was, it wasn't just talk. He was living his faith. So I think bear, the biggest thing that we can do as men is set examples for our children and do what we say we're going to do and do what we say. You know, I'm one of those guys, Jeff, that I've moved a lot in my life, my whole life, since even as a child. And I went and visited a friend of mine, Tom and Kathy Guthrie, in Minneapolis, Minnesota, about two years ago. They're in the same house they lived in all those years. They have children who have, who have, who have, grandchild, they have grandchildren. And I walked in and I saw this very familiar chair. And it looked... Uh, old, like it needed to have been patched a couple of times. And there's a very ragged Bible next to it. And I know that's the chair he prayed in 40 years ago when I, fir when I first knew him. And he's mm -hmm. continued. And it's that practice of leading by example. When your children see the father prayer and when the father takes the children to mass and takes them to, to the altar boys, to become an altar boy, that's, that's so essential. And takes them to confession, too. <laughs> and goes to confession, yeah. No, I know there's, a, there's that teaching uh, the, when Bishop wrote us, uh, you know, Into the Breach. And, uh, and I have a series of teachings along that lines, too. But guess what? You don't have to step into the breach. You're in it already. It runs right through your living room, man. And you, you, may, you may be, there's an earthquake, uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's a breach opening right, be, 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 be right there in the living room. And your job is to is to be aware of it 
and to and to and to stand stand in that gap for your family. Um, so much is going on. The, the whole key to is is the domestic church. You know, when Nehemiah, when they rebuilt the walls of Nehemiah, it was one man and his family that rebuilt every section. They didn't talk about some big army that rebuilt it. It was one man and his family. And also, that going back to what we said earlier, each man, when he was rebuilding the wall, there'd be another man standing next to him with a spear and a shield to protect him because uh, the enemy hated what he was doing. So it's, it's each man and his family, and then that man in fellowship with other men, that, 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 that's the key. What's your daily uh, prayer life like? What is your daily walk with the Lord like? I always like to ask that. I find, Bear, that my best time in prayer is in the morning. And get a, even when we had kids at home, it was a matter of I could get up before they got up and I could spend that time alone with the Lord. And that, that time in prayer, usually what I'll do is I'll, I'll pray in Thanksgiving for things that I, the gifts and talents that I've been given. I'll pray through the uh, morning prayer and then I'll read the readings before I go to mass. And then uh, usually on the way to mass, my wife and I will pray the rosary together on, on the way to mass, go to mass. And then at least the day's been kicked off well, right? Because there's a good 30, 45 minutes of prayer right there plus mass. And then uh, night prayer as, as well uh, before going to bed. I'll do uh, out of the eye bravery on my iPhone. Mm. Beautiful. Yeah, you can always tell. I always ask men about their prayer life because it's, uh, it you, you can see that you can see you can see it in them that they've been with Jesus, and you get your marching orders from the Lord that way too. Absolutely. And when you when you spend time with Jesus, so many people think, "Well, I'm too busy to pray. I got too much work to do." Although I I pray the liturgy of the hours. My wife and I kind of do that each day, morning and evening. Liturgy means the work of the people. The most pro- most productive work you can do as a man is to pray. And then uh, th- there's fruitfulness in your work. And also, you kinda, God will give you the heads up sometimes. You're more tuned into him, so you're more aware of, don't go through that door, close this door, open this door. Do you know what I'm trying to say? You just have more clarity of, of God's will in your life. I think you become more aware of the will of God, and you become aware internally that the Spirit is leading you. Um, yeah, I was going to ask you about the books behind you. Is that really a picture of your house, or is that a, a yeah, fake that's, backdrop? <laughs> that's a, it's a fake backdrop. It's a picture I took. It's a picture from my house. Oh, how cool. Those books. Uh, what what book are you reading now? Just We've got 10. That's the last question I'd like to ask. Um, the book, I, I'll tell you what, Bear, there's not just like one book yeah, that I read. Yeah, you got the reading I, stack. I have, a, I, have a, I have a reading stack. Yeah, I get it. I could tell. Uh, one of the books I just uh, finished was Crisis in the Church. Uh, that was a book by Ralph Martin. I love Ralph I Martin. Wow. Finished yeah. that recently. Uh, I'm reading a book now by Benedict Groeschel. Mm. Passages. Beautiful. Uh, so there's quite a few on yeah, my so list. Yeah, so you got the same thing. You got a reading stack. I know. Well, we got to go, Jeff. We've been talking with Jeff Garrett, a uh, regular Catholic guy. He has a regular Catholic guy podcast and a website, regular Catholic guy. Uh, thanks for joining us, Jeff. Thank you, Bear. It was great to be on your show. Well, we always say here our last words at Deep Adventure Ministries, we give an aloha. So I'm going to shout aloha. If you want to join me a little bit, you're welcome to. I don't shout too loud. Too loud. But the word ha in Hawaiian means breath. And aloha means to give breath. And love is to give. It's self-donation and willing the true good for the other. So may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha. (laughs) Good stuff happens when you support us at patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure. You get instant access to every radio show, Bear Wozniak Adventure, in our TV episodes, Long Ride Home, the instant we produce them, months before they even air. Plus, we give you all kinds of free stuff, coffee cups, t-shirts, and other things like that. Go to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure and become our patron. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that bell.